Beatmania is Rhythm Gaming's longest running franchise with a history dating all the way back to the late 90s when it helped to establish rhythm games as a genre and also kick off Japanese rhythm games as a whole. Beatmania itself had a large number of releases, culminating in Beatmania The Final in 2002, leaving the previously released Beatmania 2DX to take over as the main series and continue on the legacy of the original game, with Beatmania 2DX still running today over 20 years later. While at the beginning, Beatmania stayed largely on its own path, releasing main versions every few months, around the turn of the millennium it seems like Konami decided to kick it into high gear with the Beatmania series. After the release of Beatmania Complete Mix 2, the series took a bit of a different direction for a little while, leaning more heavily into spin-offs. In the Dead Rhythm Games video, I talked about Club Mix, Dreams Come True, and Core Remix. Beatmania 3 also started around this time, giving me the impression that Konami was doing a bit of experimenting with the series to see what they wanted to do with it. That period would ultimately end with the release of 6th Mix, but not before Konami would try something even weirder. In that same time period, not one, not two, but three Beatmania typing games were released for home play. Beatmania Da and Beatmania Best Da, both released on Windows and Mac in 2000, and in 2001 we got Beatmania Da Da Da, a PS2 version of Beatmania Da, complete with its own keyboard controller. Beatmania Da and Best Da are a bit harder to deal with, being for older PC hardware, so today we're going to take a look at Konami's rhythm typing game for the PS2, Beatmania Da Da Da. Also, check out my Patreon. If you don't, I'll send 864 Beatmania Da keyboards to your house. This is a threat. The first thing you notice upon starting up Beatmania Da Da Da, other than the prompt to use the included Da 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 keyboard, is the intro movie. It oozes that early style of Beatmania, and it's a super cool and stylish intro to the game. Once in-game, you'll notice the game is heavily populated with assets from older Beatmania games. And I mean, this is an older Beatmania game, but it's not even in line with the style of the game that was released before this. At the time, Complete Mix 2 was out, which looks like this, where Da 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 is using the older song select style where the genre was more prominent than the song title. The game features three modes, so let's start with Introduction Da. If any of you watching learned typing when I did, then you'll know that touch typing used to be all the rage. While touch typing is just a generic term for being able to type on a keyboard without looking at the keys, most of the time it specifically refers to typing with eight fingers placed on A, S, D, F, and J, K, L, semicolon, also known as the home row. In the early 2000s, home use of computers and keyboards was far less common than it is now, and a lot of people were still learning to use computers and keyboards, and more specifically how to type fast. As such, Introduction Da serves as an introduction to touch typing for the player. This is also useful because the game somewhat enforces touch typing in its charting, so you can get a good idea of what finger positioning the game is expecting of you from its charting. Lesson Da is the second mode of the game, and is more of a broad tutorial slash practice mode. It's used to practice speed and accuracy of touch typing for the sake of playing the game well. There are modes where you type either alphabetized letters or hiragana characters and see how fast and accurate you can be, all with some fun music and sound effects along the way. L A J L K Semicolon Semicolon J The main mode of the game is Master Da. When you get to Song Select, you'll notice that the game uses a menu style very similar to the first few Beatmania games, even to the point where the genre is presented larger than the name of the song itself. Songs in Da 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 are split into two different types of gameplay. 
the normal Beat Mania type of gameplay where you hit notes as they reach the bottom of the screen, and a second type of gameplay that will show up periodically throughout the song that requires the player to type a Japanese word before it hits the Judgment Zone. If you type the word fast enough before the bonus lines, you'll get extra points for that word. The game also retains Beat Mania scratching on the spacebar, and even has Free Zone, a long gone Beat Mania mechanic where the player can scratch as much as they want inside the note's duration. The game does actually have a full grading system as well as pass or fail, though what's funny is you can pass with a score so low you don't actually get to record your initials. Speaking of which, check out this clown ass sound effect that plays when you fail. Da 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 features full key sounds just like in normal Beat Mania, and even has Da 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 original key sounded versions, like this version of Overdoser that has letter based key sounds and a different miss noise. It's a really nice touch. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, this game feels really hard. Even Easy 2 has a pretty high note density, and it only gets harder as it goes. Plus, as the difficulties get higher, more keys on the keyboard get added to gameplay, adding to the complexity. That said, some other issues arise as they add notes and complexity to the game. One immediate issue you're gonna notice is that unlike in Arcade Beat Mania with the white and blue notes, there's nothing to distinguish notes that are on different rows of the keyboard. So every note is a white note and you're forced to check the actual letter to figure out what row the key is on. Though the lanes are at least separated by finger according to touch typing, so that does help a little bit. But with the lack of distinguishing rows visually with key color, it just kind of feels like you have no idea where the keys are on the keyboard. Honestly, the whole game overall feels very difficult for an English speaking typist. The word typing gameplay in particular is really hard because in addition to the words being in Japanese, which an English speaker isn't used to typing, so it's hard to go fast, the Japanese characters are what appear on screen first before the English transliteration, meaning you're at a time disadvantage for the judgment line as an English typer. On some of the higher difficulties, I couldn't finish a single word. Though honestly, if you were a new typist at the time this game came out, I'd imagine even for a Japanese speaker, it would be tough to keep up. Some of the words come down blazing fast. I'm maybe not the fastest typist on the planet, but I'm no slouch and I can type without looking at the keyboard. But trying to play this game was really brutal for me. The hard difficulty gets absolutely insane with no visual distinction other than the letter and the note speed increase is directly tied to the BPM. So some of the higher levels were nearly unplayable for me since the higher level songs also have longer words to type as well. I will say, forcing yourself to hit notes according to the touch typing finger does make it a bit nicer, since I don't exactly do traditional touch typing. But I would say that the difficulty curve gets hard pretty fast. The game went from easy to very hard really quickly. The playfield is also really wide, which makes it feel like your eyes are bouncing all over the screen trying to keep up with the letters. All that said, the game serves as a nice time capsule for the original style of Beatmania from back in the late 90s and early 2000s. The menus, the music, the key sounds, the tutorials, it all oozes that early Beatmania style. I don't know if they decided that PC typing software was lucrative in the 2000s and thought this would be a good way to capitalize, but it's a fun way to take a look at some of the early Beatmania style again. The game even features some unused content as well. There's some mouse cursors that would have been used in a PC version of this game, a broken easter egg breakout minigame, and even an early version of the opening. So if you feel like subjecting yourself to an early 2000s Japanese typing game, I guess I'd recommend this one to a rhythm game fan. It's a pretty difficult game, but it's a fun afternoon to go through and see all that charm that the Beatmania series has left behind. It's a fun time capsule and a really cool piece of Bimani history. Thanks for watching, and thanks so much to my supporters on Patreon. Check out my Twitter, Twitch, and community Discord. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.